pattern, but they are all uh, different. So I would like to start with 17, and then you will be more than happy. I will be more than happy if you continue choosing from there. So 17 limit sx approaches negative infinity 3t squared plus t over t to the third minus 4t plus 1. Before we look at an example of this example, for example, here, I would like to analyze one thing. The limit of 1 over x to the fourth power, or any power that is greater than 1, positive. So when x approaches infinity, or when x approaches negative infinity, doesn't matter. What do you think this is? Before you say anything, I'm going to ask. If I have one dollar, one dollar, and I want to divide it by infinitely many people, because when x, x to the fourth, when x approaches infinity, this is infinity. Where is this going? Only two zeros. Absolutely. So, thank you so much. So, limit of a number or something small. It could even be x squared plus 1. But you can say x squared plus 1 is not small. It is small by comparison to x to the fourth in the denominator. So whenever the numerator is weaker than the denominator, smaller than the denominator, and x approaches infinity or negative infinity, not to 5, 3, 10, 11. No. Only when x approaches infinity or negative infinity, the answer will be 0. So please keep this in mind. So keeping this in mind, we're going to start here. This is a side note. Like always, what do we need to do for, I shouldn't say always, 95% of the cases, or the majority, I would say. What do we need to do when we try to determine this limit? What is the first, yes, we plug it in. Now, we are talking about infinity or negative infinity. So let's analyze the numerator first. Which of these two terms is the most powerful one when x approaches infinity or negative infinity? Which of these two counts more? The first one or the second one? Anyone, please. Which of these two terms is more powerful when x approaches infinity? Of course. Of course, there is no discussion there. Absolutely. This is too small to mention. This is the most powerful. What is its degree? Two. Two. Okay. We have degree two in the numerator. Please plug in negative infinity and tell me what I should write up here. We shouldn't be thinking that much. Negative infinity squared, everybody knows it's... Thank you very much. Perfect. We move on to the denominator. And the, notice that I do not connect them. Please don't connect them. Again, I'm going to ask the same silly question. Which of these three terms is the most powerful? At infinity or negative infinity, it doesn't matter. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes, of course. <laughs> These two are too small. Please plug in negative infinity and tell me what to write here. Negative infinity? Excellent. The sign is not important. 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity are 2 out of 7, 2 out of 7, indeterminate 
cases. They have hope. They have hope, both of them. Okay. But can you identify the degree in the denominator? Three. Good. This is what we analyzed a minute ago. If the numerator has a smaller degree or is less powerful or it's weaker than the denominator, what should I write as the final answer? I, I, I will still show you step by step why we do that, why we get there. But what should the answer be? Small over big at infinity. Zero. Of course. Of course. And I will write y equals zero horizontal asymptote. I will not write at negative infinity because this is a rational function. Rational. If it's something else, I may have to write y equals zero horizontal asymptote at negative infinity only. Okay. And the question is how? How do we get that? Okay. We know that we get that from pre-calculus. Small over big at infinity must be zero. Small, degree two. Big, degree three. Small over big at infinity or negative infinity, doesn't matter. Zero. Okay, let me show you step by step how we get that. Please stop me if you have questions. You know that. Anytime. Okay. So limit as x approaches, I have to copy it again. 3t squared plus t divided by t cubed minus 4t plus 1. Yes, we get infinity over infinity. The symbol doesn't matter. The, I mean, the sign doesn't matter. It's still the same thing. You already told me that the numerator, numerator has degree 2. You already told me that the denominator has degree 3. We are going to factor out the degree. You can say, what is this? What are you talking about? What do you mean factor out the degree? What, 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 what? It's very simple. Since you already told me, do not drop the limit operator, we did not apply it yet. You said the degree is 2. Okay, I'm going to factor out t squared. You already said the degree is 3. Okay, fine, I'm going to factor out t cubed. And you can say, how is it possible? What are you talking about? That's not possible. t squared is not a factor here. True. I have two terms. Whatever I put here, those two terms have to match. Meaning, t squared times this has to be this, t squared times this has to be that. t squared times what is 3t squared? You're going to say 3. t squared times what is t? No problem. 1 over t t squared over t is t. Can anyone proceed accordingly and tell me what to write inside here? And you have to give me three terms. Here we had to, only two terms. We only wrote two terms. But can anyone give me the three terms here? Please don't be afraid to be wrong. Please. I just need to, to know that you are here and you're answering. Please. Okay. The first term would be 1. Yes, very good. The next one would be 4 over something to give us t. t squared. Awesome, plus. And the last one has to give us 1. So what should we have in the denominator so that when we distribute it, we get 1? t cubed. That's it. Awesome. At this point, of course, I am allowed to simplify. 2 from the top, 2 from the bottom, so I have 1 over t. At this point, I would like you to tell me where is this going. Of course, when... Sorry. Of course, we're talking about t. Sorry about that. Makes no sense. We're talking about t. Good. So where is this going? Where is this going? 
when t approaches infinity or negative infinity. Small over big when t approaches infinity. Zero? Of course, zero. Thank you. Everybody, please answer, please. So all these are zero. So I have a 3 over 1, but it's over t. So again, 3 over big. Final answer, we are applying the limit. All these are gone. So I have 3 over t when t approaches negative infinity. Would that be positive infinity? Careful. Small over big when t approaches negative infinity. Let me write it again. Zero? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me write it again, but maybe that's not clear. From the numerator, we only have left a 3. From the denominator, we only have left t. And this is 0, which we knew. We knew the answer. But I needed to show you the procedure of getting 0. So as you see, no one would have predicted that. that infinity, so these are indeterminate cases, meaning no clue. No clue. That's what it means. No idea. Nobody would have envisioned infinity over infinity to be 0. Right? So that's why do not draw conclusions. You have to work on these seven indeterminate cases step by step. Perfect. Now the floor is open to discussion or questions or anything else. Okay, so let's look at anything else. Of course, these are all rational functions. This is a different story, a different story here, because it's rational. I'm sorry, ra uh, rational with combined with radicals. These are different, because they have a radical in the numerator. The same thing here, though, though these are similar. These four are similar. Can we try 21? Yes, let's try 21. Where is it? Okay, here it is. Very good. So let's continue with 21. And 21 was limit as x approaches infinity. 4 minus the square of x over 2 plus the square of x. Perfect. Good. So first we have to plug it in. Where is the numerator going? Anyone? Please give it a try. It's okay if you're wrong. Where is the numerator going? It looks like it's approaching the baby. Of course. What about the denominator? So 4 minus infinity is infinity or negative infinity doesn't matter. Same thing for the denominator, infinity. Okay. So let's see what we do next. What I recommend in this particular situation is there is no degree here. These are not polynomials. So there is no degree. But I will factor out the square of x in both top and bottom. Let's see what is left. And of course, gladly, gladly do this. That was my purpose. So. Let's identify what is left here. That's very important. 4 over 2. 4 over the square of x. Minus 1. Baby girl, baby girl, mommy is trying. I need to focus, okay? 
it's what like a, you learn. What about, the de, what about the denominator? Can anyone fit this, what we need to write here? Remember, the square of x times 4 over the square of x is 4. The square of x times negative 1 is negative the square of x. So what do we have here? Two terms, so to speak. Two quantities added. I need two quantities. 2 over the square root of x? Yes. And then plus? One. That's it. That's one. Awesome. Perfect. Now let's analyze. Of course, this is what I wanted. That's my dream. A dream come true. When x approaches infinity, 4 over infinity, where is it going? Uh, zero. Off. Awesome. 2 over infinity, where is it going? Zero. Perfect. So well, these are gone. Now I'm ready to write the limit. What is the limit? Negative 1? Negative 1. Which means y equals negative 1 because the limit was determined as x approaches infinity. This is limit at infinity. And the answer was a number which means y equals negative 1 is a horizontal asymptote. And here it has to be at infinity only because I cannot plug in negative infinity in the square of x. So here I have to specify. There is no other way because I will not be able to plug in negative infinity here. Awesome, perfect example. Questions, please.